Billy Ward last year, I imagine he, or last season, he worked on learning the position, all the ins and outs and so forth. Where is he now and is he ready to contribute? Absolutely. You know, he's, uh, the game is slowing down for him. You know, we do a, we're very multiple on offense, as you guys know. And uh, so you have to play a variety of spots as a tight end. You know, it could be field one, it could be boundary two, it could be in line three to the field. Uh, and he is collecting the, that information and processing, processing it at a, at a much faster pace. Next question comes from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Who just came from Six Flags, I'm sure, but go ahead. I got you. <laughs> Chris, uh, just curious about the the two Dillons and kind of what do you need there to kind of see some separation as they kind of get lumped in together, but kind of uh, what's the difference there between those two guys and then kind of what do they well, need I to Well, I think the, the from the development piece, I think if, if you were able to see our practices, Davini is really becoming more physical as an inline blocker. Uh, and he's also making plays down the field in situational football, critical situations um, that we have kind of created. And he's showing up and flashing down the field. And then Leonard is really the game, although he played as a freshman, he played last year, he really grasps the whole offense. So if, if a wideout goes down and we go 12 personnel and we're given 11 pictures, he's a guy we can throw in and still be an effective threat down the field. He can still motion him for multiple positions. And he's a physical guy at the point. He's been really good on his inserts on the counters and on the backside crunches. So, I mean, those are two guys that have played some football here and are really evolving into elite players. Next question from Ken Segura from the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Ken. Hey, Chris. Um, hey, Ken, what's up? Not much. Uh, I remember last year uh, you were, I guess, in, in August, September, I think you were pretty optimistic about kind of the role the Tides would have in the passing game as far as catching balls. Um, I'm curious, yeah. do you, it obviously didn't quite work out for different reasons. I'm sure we wanted, but do you still have that same sort of optimism? Like, how do you see tight ends fitting in, in you know, in, in this season? I think it's it's really a, it's a, it's a it's a part a whole situation, and I think that our parts have gotten better. And I'm not saying at the tight end position alone. I'm saying globally. I think we're better up front. I think our quarterback's going to have a better understanding of the scheme. I think the running backs have a better understanding of the scheme. So in our passing game is what you're referencing. When guys are in the right places at the right times and the quarterback has time to throw the ball, which our O line's been outstanding this spring, and we're, they were pretty good last fall. Uh, and the quarterback's growth, you're going to see the tight end utilized. You're going to see the running backs utilized more in the passing game because they're going to be spots in the field and the available throws are going to be there. And that's what our passing attack is based on, having those underneath throws as well as vertical threats. Uh, and that's just a growth and evolution of our offense. You know what I'm saying? With the personnel that we've accumulated over really the last 24 months to fit the offense. Another question from Rod McKenzie. Hey, Chris, switching over to special teams, you have a bunch of early enrollees and also uh, transfers. Have you seen from their athleticism any, anybody that can contribute to uh, your special teams? Well, I think Kyrick's a guy that, that uh, is going to be a dynamic guy on special teams. I think Kevin Harris. We've got a load of DNs, just longer bodies that can help on kickoff return, that can fly down on kickoff, just bigger bodies um, is what we've accumulated. You know, the, our personnel department, Pat Suttis, and, and those guys have just done a wonderful job of helping us to get big, long, athletic athletes that can really go and fit blocks and get off blocks and run and, and really attack things. So we're in a better place there. And obviously, Coach Lou does a wonderful job, and, and, the, and those guys are developing at a high rate. Another question from Kelly Quinlan. You guys don't have the the guy expect to be your kicker and the guy expect to be your punter in camp. Does it change at all? Kind of. How uh, I just got a battery them? low. So can you can you ever load up these things? I mean, Mike, let's come a little bit more prepared to these things. I'm good. Go ahead. So you're referencing our special teams. Yeah, you don't uh, have, specialists. Yeah, like you don't have the guy you think is going to be your kicker. The guy's going to be your punter, probably. Does that change anything with how you guys approach it? Not point? really. I think if you come out here, Jude is pounding the ball. Verdisco is coming back from the ACL. He's got a lot more confidence. Um, you know, Austin Ken is doing a great job. Our snappers have been elite. You know, Coco is uh, uh, partially not here because academics. He shows up and he just zips the ball back. And he, he's, those guys are doing that, those things on their own. So I think we're in a good place from that perspective. And we'll go ahead and take uh, one or two more for Coach Wiesahan. We'll start with one from Kelly Quinlan. 
In terms of just um, the tight end in the red zone, is that something that you would like to see become a little more prominent? That's obviously a huge part of NFL games and that kind of thing. And is Absolutely. That you know, I want my guys to get the touches. We're, we're going to attack the red zone as we see the red zone, you know, and we have some things in and, uh, you know, we did that some two point plays a day that are pretty exciting and, and innovative. And uh, yeah, they're going to be as those guys grow uh, and, and get targeted, it's going to be really fun, you know, so we have some things up our sleeve down there that are that we think have done through research over the off season, it can be really, really good. Okay. If there's uh, not any more for, well, we've got one more. Rod, you have one more for Coach Wiesam? Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about recruiting. I mean, not specifics, but nationally. But when you first got here, you had to scramble to find players. Now yeah. that you've been here a couple of years, has it made it easier for you to find the type of tight end that you want to put in your system? I think I think so. I think, you know, obviously the first year getting there as late as we did, it was an obvious challenge from uh, there were no tight ends here. Right. So numerically, you had to look at the roster. You know, we brought in Tyler, we brought in Davini and then we developed uh, Leonard. You know, Leonard went from 212 to 248 within the year. Um, but again, if I can just keep getting one a year and building that room the right way, that allows us to use those other scholarships in heavy need areas, if that makes sense. And, you know, Jack Coco gets left out of the picture sometimes, and he did a really great job in his role last year, you know, catching the ball in the flats, things that, you know, an O lineman that went from 284 to 233 and then was a, a really strong blocker in the run game. So to answer your question, yes, I think this place will, will be a, a destination uh, for a lot of tight ends. And they're willing to come here because of what the school has to offer academically and what this program is built on. 